Welcome, folks, back to Art of the City TV live streaming right here from San Diego, California. I'm your host, Ruth Ann. And uh, today I'm really excited because um, I haven't seen a lot of you in a while. And I know I've been getting texts and emails. When are you coming back on live? And so we had a really good run there with lots of different artists coming on. And we had to take a little bit of a break. But I think today is a really important day for you folks that, who are tuning in, primarily because of the elections. And I know it's been a very stressful time for all of us, no matter what your thoughts are, the division in this country brings a lot of stress. But one thing that I'm very proud of as an art dealer for going on 30 years is that um, art is the one thing that we can come together as people on because art doesn't really take sides. It's really something that we all get to enjoy individually and collectively. And it's a way that we get to see the best that humanity has to offer. I think um, we get to see a lot of the worst and we've been seeing the worst. And um, this artist that I'm bringing on right now definitely is one of those artists that will lift your spirits up. He's a Native American artist, and I've really devoted the month of November to Indigenous art because it is um, Native American Heritage Month, the month of November. So I thought it would be ap apropos to bring artists on from all over the country. He's streaming um, from Arizona, so um, that was a hot topic today as well for those of you who are watching. So let me see if I can get Joe Hopkins to come on the show here. Hey Joe. Hey, Joe. Hello. How are you doing there? I'm good. It's a little warm here, but uh, you know, uh, among uh, other things, but uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> doing quite well. <laughs> yeah, your state was really heated up in a lot of different ways today. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, what almost 90, or it is 90 here today so far. So uh, yeah, pretty warm. But, you know, we were uh, kind of on that bubble as well, too. So it was kind of a hot seat. So, yes. Well, welcome to Art of the City. I'm so pleased to have you. And I've been a fan. I've been following you for quite a while now. And, um, you know, had you in my notebook. I've got to reach out. And <laughs> so, tell a little bit about your journey. I know you lived at two different places. Where are you from originally? Uh, born and raised in Oklahoma. I uh, grew up in a little small rural town, uh, northeast of Oklahoma City, uh, population about 600 people. Uh, you know, that's counting fence, fence posts, dogs, cows, you know, all that too. So really small community. Um, I grew up on a farm uh, for 10 years, uh, raised cattle, hogs, sheep, goats, chickens, you name it, we had it. And uh, did a little bit of, you know, uh, sh uh, cattle showing and stuff I'd like involved in FFA, 4-H, all that. But uh, yeah, I grew up uh, on a farm, so very busy, but also in my spare time when I was younger, I uh, uh, would always dabble in art. And actually, I think I was about 10 or 11, and for Christmas, I got an art set. And oh, <laughs> that, that kind of opened the door there, you know, when I was younger. And uh but yeah, um, uh, it was great growing up in a small town in Oklahoma uh, just because of everybody knew everybody, you know, uh, and just it was really kind of a tight knit community. So I, I, I miss it, you know, the, living in the city now, it's so much different, you know, yes. and uh, but yeah. Um, were you near um, the Indian reservation, or were you just outside of one? And what, what was your uh, we were surrounded by what we call reservations in Oklahoma, the basically uh, Indian land. Uh, mm -hmm. Iowa uh, tribe was just uh, north of us, about six miles, and mm -hmm. you know, but Sac and Fox and the Shawnee, and sure. so we we were pretty much surrounded, you know, as far as uh uh nation or native lands so was about from my traditional uh lands there in oklahoma was about 45 minutes to the east uh, or to the west of it so and what which is now got bigger 
Yes. <laughs> what, what tribe are you from? I am uh, Muscogee Creek and Seminole of Oklahoma. Okay. And is that on one side of the family or both? Uh, it's, uh, on mine, it's on one side, uh, okay. which is my mother. Um, okay. But uh, my aunts and uncles, they are uh, half Creek, half Seminole. So my granddad okay. was uh, Creek and my grandmother was Seminole. So There's some rich history there, boy. I've been reading, you know, I've got a couple of books I've been reading about uh, Native history and some of the stories, and you guys have some of the best stories. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was, uh, it's, you know, that's one thing that... Uh, I call myself kind of a, an urban native because I wasn't raised on a reservation. I wasn't, I was adopted when I was eight years old okay. and the family that I was adopted, even though they had a minuscule amount of Indian blood, as you would call it, um, I wasn't raised traditionally or, or a native. Uh, I was purely raised in a, in a, um, non-native household. Okay. And, um, so for, 10 years, I, you know, actually for probably closer to 13 years, I was not, you know, uh, involved in any of my culture or, or heritage yeah. other than, you know, the things that happened in the schools, you know, and you look back yeah. at it and it's, <laughs> it's not, it's very, um, uh, demeaning Thank now you. that you look back at it. <laughs> Well, Paul, that was one of the beginnings of fake news, hate to say it, but yeah. Right, right. You know, but uh, growing up there and in a non-native family, about 15 or 16, I really kind of started understanding what it was, what, who I was as far as uh, I knew I wasn't white, <laughs> you know, and I wanted to know more about it. And... So when I turned of legal age, you know, after adoption, I got in contact with my uh, biological family. So kind of had a late start getting back into my heritage. But uh, from that point, I have kind of enthralled myself and, in you know, uh, into my culture and my heritage uh, to reconnect of who I really was. So Did that, with that, you know, as I Growing up, because I too, you know, my parents woke up one day with, you know, they were young parents. So I didn't even still have an opportunity to really connect until I was, you know, I was, I was pretty young, but you know, they didn't really have that understanding. But I always knew that I was good. And I don't know if you had that feeling because I, I you know, I had dark skin and people were always trying to categorize me. Mexican, <laughs> right. I never really felt like I fit in until I started understanding who I was as a native person and spending yeah. the time with my family and being on the reservation. Did you have that similar feeling? Uh, yes. Uh, I think, I mean, adopted family was great and everything, but I, I think there was just something missing. And I think yeah. it was because I knew I had a brother and sister that I wasn't adopted with. And uh, so there was always this kind of hole to try and find them, you know, find out who they, you know, where they were. Uh, and I think it was more because I was old enough when uh, I was taken by the state to s understand what was happening. Oh, okay. And so I knew that part of it. But. Uh, so I always wanted to get back in touch with her uh, right. when I was able to, and, you know, but hearing all the, you know, once I got back in touch and, 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 uh, got back involved with the family and everything, hearing the stories of when I was younger and, you know, and everything. And I think that's kind of what helped me kind of reconnect to, you know, with who I really was. And right. so it filled that gap or filled that hole that, you know, and I couldn't really tell you what it was, you know, but I just knew it was something that I had to do. I love that. I think it's yeah. so wonderful. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of you now, now after a little bit more, and I start to 
adoption is that you have to be native to adopt. Right. It. Uh, and we were we were just before that so just before that happens yeah okay so <laughs> well, here you know. you are, and then what was the journey to this incredible artwork that you're creating well i used to always do stuff you know for friends for family you know stuff like that and they uh you know i got in playing baseball when right out of high school and got uh you know come out here so basically kind of a busy life you know as far as you know running around doing things and ended up going to you know got married went to school got my degree and uh in, and i got my degree in you know basically kind of vi visual communications which is art in itself sure. you know uh, but it took me you know seven years to figure out what i wanted to do because what I initially went to college for is not what I did, you know, seven years later. <laughs> but I think, you know, just kind of that journey and through and kind of really seeing and, and feeling what I wanted to do, uh, you know, it kind of pushed me towards going for a visual communications degree, you know, which is, you know, any type of media, anything, you know, uh, graphic design, you know, uh, video, photography, all that. So, and I am very... Uh, it's hard for me to stay on one straight, you know, like do this, do this, do this. I kind of like having different things to do, which is why I have so many different projects going because I'll work on this for a little while and then have to go back over here just to kind of mix it up. Cause, uh, I, I am one that, uh, uh, very rarely do I have a routine. <laughs> so you, got not, a lot of, you got a lot of creative juices happening then sounds like. Yeah. And, and. So I, I, I mean, it's constantly every day there's something popping in my head and it might not even have anything to do with, you know, whether it be a painting or whether it be, you know, uh, sculpting or, or beaded, you know, but I just, I love coming up with things and then trying to figure them out, you I know, new it. ways to do things, new, uh, new techniques. And that's well, why, me... that's ahead, why, no, that's why. And a lot of the stuff that you see behind me, you see a different style in a lot of the stuff because I do have kind of a basic style, mm -hmm. but I try to change it up, you know, and play with it a little bit. Well, so. I was going to ask you about that. I have um, some pieces. I'm going to bring one up in the stream, and I think you'll be able to see it. Let's see. Let's see. I'll bring it. Let's see it's neon thing. cowboy. Yeah, so neon chief. Let's talk about this a little bit because I think what I love about it is that it has almost like a pop culture, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit of influence, but you're bringing in your own ideas of what it is to be a native person. So what, tell us a little bit about this. Well, a lot of things, a lot of time, what I really try to do is, is, you know, you see these old photos of, you know, of the past and all of them look the same. You know, they're all black and white or all sepia tone. So my take was, was to reimagine them in a different light, you know, cause when you look at them, they're kind of, um, it's kind of, uh, dreary and, you know, sad, right. but, but in the, in those photos it may not be, but that's just kind of what they portray because they, they show, you know, what they went through and everything. So with this, I kind of wanted to bring a new feel to it, you know, still, you know, the image is what it is. I didn't change anything on the image. And, but by bringing different colors into it, it creates a different feeling. So yeah, that's what I try to do with it is, you know, play with it a little bit, change the look of it uh, as far as the, the colors in it. And, you know, see uh, what kind of emotion I can bring out. And this one was probably, as far as using colors, was probably one of my uh, favorite ones to do. Uh, I know, just, it throws it right away because I'm like, this is so cool. <laughs> that, you know, pop of green in the background. Mm -hmm. it sets it off. It's yeah. Cool. I love it. Let me get another one. So I tried to pick from the one that went a little bit different. Um, let's see if we can put this one up. This is not made really up at all. Nope. But I just love it. Yeah. Another play with colors, you know, uh, it's one of my favorite images of him. 
uh, just because it shows, you know, just that's Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> so this is kind of my play on that as well, um, you know, with the different colors and everything. Uh, but if you look at the, the hair, uh, there is a design in the hair that I use in, in a lot of my paintings uh, to try and just change a, a, another feeling, you know, by adding a, a design element into it. And it was a lot of fun doing it with this. And you'll see in some of my paintings, you'll see this, whether it be in the, the one tone or in multiple tones, how it changes within itself. It can change a complete and make a completely different look. So, but yeah, this was a lot of fun. This is probably, uh, it's in my top three. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I love it, the detail too, because it's, um, you know, you're almost, some of them are more, this one almost has a little bit of a photo room with the two of those as well. Mm -hmm. you know, so iconic. So yes. I love that one. And then let's see if I can get another one. I'm not the most uh, technical person here. I thought a good technician. Let's see if we can see this. I thought this was really interesting. Mm. I loved how you almost block color the separation of the color yeah. there. This piece is uh, Sitting Crow, uh, Sitting okay. Bull's uh, brother. And when I saw the actual photo, I had at this time that I did this when I had a thing with glasses or goggles because it was something different that you didn't see in uh, natives wearing in photos. Right. And there's another big one that I do that's probably number two in my top three. But this one here was a lot of fun just because of the elements that I had within the image itself uh, and playing with the, you know, the three tone, the three color tone just in his image. Uh, again, it's not black and white, it's different colors, so it still kind of brings a, a different feeling into it. But then the blocking part in the background, it was just something that I, you know, kind of wanted to see if it would add depth to the, the piece itself, you know, instead of just being a, a solid background, kind of wanted to break that up and, and see, uh, and then go with the two colors and, you know, and I was really, uh, I played a lot with this it wasn't the first two colors <laughs> I'll tell you with. what, that's a hard composition to pull off yeah and that was one of the reasons why i chose it because i thought you know the artist that's out there watching right now they'll know what we're talking about right <laughs> you know the best art it looks really simple not so simple especially right. with those tones and what you're doing there so and you like, it's just like anything else it's a, it's a palette you know and your palette can change you know, because oh. once you, once you, your first idea, a lot of times is the best idea. So, but variances within that will change with throughout the piece when you, when you get into it, because what you thought would work, eh, you change that just a little bit. And it might just be a, a tone of a color, not necessarily a, a completely different color, you know, just to kind of bring that piece together and, you know, and an artist's work is never done. So, I mean, there's always things that you, right. when, you're, when, when you're finished with a piece, you're not really finished with a piece because there's always things that you look back at it and you go, Ooh, I wish I'd have done this or I'd have done that. But, you know, you got to be yeah, finished well, with it. That's point. kind of the age old question. You know, people always, you know, when do you know when it's finished? You don't. <laughs> you know, uh, you because it, but, at some point say, okay, I yes. still wonder. Yes, and it's really the truth because, I mean, even if you see the, the big piece back here, Billy Jack behind me, I constantly look at it and go, I wonder if I could add something to that. I wonder if I could do something, you know, maybe a little bit different. But then again, just with the images by itself on there, that's the piece, you yeah. know, and if I add anything else to it, do I take away? So I it's just kind of... Say, Don't do it! Like that, right? <laughs> right, right. Can we, you know? can we get a little sneak peek at that one in the back? Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can uh, okay. see that one there. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> and I think there's another piece that I sent you that is uh, kind of similar um, of uh, Sitting Bull. So yes. I tried to pull up as many, and unfortunately, with this uh, B Live um, streaming, it only lets you put up so many, or I'll mm -hmm. spend it. You're out of the picture, and that doesn't even <laughs> <laughs> so Let's talk a little bit about um, 
your how you've been because you do a lot of different things. But yeah. how have you been able to create an income stream with your art? Because that's kind of a lot of artists are watching, and that's one of the reasons why I do art is to do is to inspire artists. Hang in there. Yes. It's not that easy. It's not an overnight success. <laughs> no. So it, how um, how do you fare with trying to be um, a selling artist? Uh, it's probably one of the hardest things to do is because it's self-promotion and yeah. nobody likes to, unless you're a few people, nobody really likes to talk about themselves. Nobody likes to, you know, gloat as you would call it, but you're not mm -hmm. really gloating. You, you, you know, uh, there's different ways to go about it, you know, some good, some not, but it's, uh, the thing is, it's, it's self-promoting yourself and your talents and so what the way i kind of go about it is i, I kind of let the work speak for itself uh to a point but you've got to be visible you know today with uh social media it's a lot easier than what it was you know right 20 years ago when there was no social media you know so but the the thing the way to do it is, is to be visible and stay visible and you know, I'm not saying that you have to create a new piece every other day, but it's not necessarily creating piece, but creating content that is um, positive content for yourself. So it may not be a painting, it may not be a sculpture, it may not be a beaded piece, but just doing something to kind of stay interactive with the people so they don't forget about you. Sure. And, and point them, you know, to a place where they can look at your stuff or purchase your stuff or, right. or contact you to be able to purchase stuff or, you know, do commission pieces. Right. And that's probably the hardest thing to do is just, just to stay visible. And, and because, you know, you get so caught up in other things, mm -hmm. uh, but you're like, oh, you, I haven't posted anything <laughs> for two weeks. And the next thing you know, you know, people, you're only getting like, you know, 10 likes on things versus, you know, before you were getting a hundred likes. So it's just staying visible and, um, don't be hard on yourself, you know? And if you're shy, you just got to kind of come out of your bubble a little bit. I know that was the, probably the hardest thing at the very beginning was to talk about yourself, you know, and put yourself out there because everybody, you know, doesn't like rejection. Or, well, you know, it takes a lot to but it takes a lot. To... You got to, you got to kind of thick skin, you know, let people say what they're going to say. Cause they're going to say it no matter what, you're not going to appease everybody. You're not going to make everybody happy. You know, your prices aren't going to be what everybody wants to pay for you. You're in your piece, you know, are you going to be too high? You're going to be too low. And so you just got to kind of work with it, find a happy medium and, you know, but stay at it, you know, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing because somebody's going to see it and somebody's going to want it. And once you do that, now, you know, the confidence gets built up and everything, but you just got to stay with it, you know, doing it for a month and not getting any results. You know, you've got to stick with it. You've really got to push. Like I said, it's, it's not an overnight success. I've been doing this now for eight, nine years, you know, really kind of pushing everything thing and so, it's still um, you know you've got to stay on top of it before covid did you do some of the art fairs um did you do indie kit how did you get your um it kind of broke up there so i didn't get all of the questions I was, I was, yeah i was mentioning that before covid uh huh. How did you promote yourself? Were you doing uh, or how did you get your name out? Most of it was uh, art markets, and I really, you know, I did a few. Uh, I'd say on total, probably about ten. Uh, I didn't do Indian market, but I did do IFAM. Okay. Uh, which was kind of within Indian market. Okay. That was really uh, IFAM was my first. The first year that it happened was my first time ever doing an art market. And I would have to say it was the busiest I'd ever been as far as people, not necessarily buying, but coming in and talking about, sure. you know, the artwork. 
and even fellow artists that were established and you know had been around a while coming in and and talking about you know the artwork i think that was probably the biggest thing that pushed me to keep going and mm -hmm. keep doing what i was doing and 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 the path that i uh, that i was doing it on with the colors and with the content because i you know from established artists that are beautiful and amazing artists would tell me that they couldn't paint with these colors and it just kind of blew my mind that okay we have a, a, a palette of you know millions of different colors that we could use but you, you're telling me that you can't use these colors with what you do and and i, I get it but then for them to be kind of astounded by that and amazed by the stuff that we were doing with the different colors that i use as you say i use bright colors i love the bright colors well that the goes better. back to your signature and i think that's the beauty of looking at your work i mean i see other um native artists that are creating artwork that is you know maybe a simple or they have their own tape on it but yours is incredibly unique i think that probably also has to do with your design that yeah. Well, being, um, being in more of that mindset, you've learned how to utilize colors that probably someone who just went to fine art school never experienced. Yeah. Well, and, and it's so funny because my, my nephew did a painting uh, about a month ago and he's kind of just getting into it, you know. And so he did the painting and he had this colored light in his room. So he, he was painting on it when he turned the light out, and, but that light was the only light on, and he saw that the light changed the painting, mm -hmm. whatever light it was on. And so it was kind of funny because he was like, oh, my God, what, you know, he was like, this is so cool. And I was like, but you realize what you just did is, is, is you figured out that you can make things, a painting look different in a different environment. Right. And he was so happy and uh amazed by it that that's kind of what he's doing now is he's painting by light you know because when i do my painting paintings i do my paintings in daylight light um i don't do them in a warm light i don't do it you know soft lighting um i do it try to do it at 6500 kelvin as most people if you're in lighting you understand what i'm talking about if you're not it's, it's daylight like outside sure because it shows the colors better and mm -hmm. uh is that part of your secret sauce? I'm sorry? Is that part of your secret sauce? Uh, I think just for my own eye, you know, okay. but a lot of, if you think about it, a lot of the art markets are outside. And yes. uh, even when you put them in your home, uh, most of the time you're going to have, you know, exterior, you know, outside lighting coming into the house. So mm -hmm. I think with the colors that I use, I would rather being able to see how they truly look, whether it be on my wall or whether it be on somebody else's wall. Uh, it'll look different under yellow lighting, you know, or under right. warmer well, lighting. That, that's very um, interesting that you thought that through because you were the first artist that I've ever seen that. Yeah. So going back to what you're creating, I know you said you're doing a video piece now. And I unfortunately wasn't able to pull that out. But oh. where, where, how did you come up with that? Because I mean, that's very traditional. And oh, it's really tricky. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we were talking earlier about, you know, I do so many different things. And because I, I have so many different things pop in my head, I see something. And it could have just been like a small piece. But it popped in my head and it's like, ooh, wonder if I could enlarge this piece and you know go big because I, I really like to do things kind of big and right. i have to really watch myself because a lot of times people don't have room for big pieces right. you know so but this piece i was like i it was kind of a go big or go home kind of a thing and when i started it and uh because i basically sat down did the math see what i needed and when i started it it was very much a big undertaking as far as making it happen because it, it it's it's thirty nine thousand six hundred beads uh oh the piece God. is four feet wide by six feet tall uh i finished it at the end of august uh it's set in a gallery for one month and sold 
and but it was yeah 39,400 something beads uh in the whole thing um but they were strong as well i am going to do another one but i'm actually this is what's even funnier is, is i'm actually contemplating on going uh in a smaller size to get more uh detail okay. um <laughs> And I don't know uh, if it'll be the same exact size. I might shrink it just a little bit, but I am planning on doing it when that happens. I'm not sure, but it is a plan in the future. Uh, I do have some other things that I'm working on or getting ready to work on, um, which is another kind of a, a large piece, but it's, uh, if you know anything about topographical maps, this one, is, this one is going to be kind of in that similar fashion. So, and hopefully that will be seen within the next month. So. That's wonderful. Yeah. So if people want to find you, um, I put this, I just put uh, Joe Hopkins on Facebook, but mm -hmm. where do you find you are if somebody wanted to buy something? I have a square site uh, that is basically my merchant site that it has everything on there from shirts to prints to stickers to, you know, uh, paintings. Basically everything that I do art-wise, I, I put on this site. And, you know, uh, I'm on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, Instagram, I'm SockMonkey2011, okay. 2011. Uh, and I believe my Facebook is Smooth Criminal. So that's C-R-E-M-I-N-O-L-E. -E. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like and it. yeah, uh, and I am with that there's paths to get to that site. Or you can just DM me as well, and I'll, I'll give you the link. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I think that you are really setting the bar for the next generation of artists because you're combining that graphic design that you have with mm -hmm. your fine art sensibility. And then you're also pointing people to your roots, to your culture, but you're also quite modern that you're doing so it can appeal to, to everybody so yeah. I think it's great, great. and it's kind of funny because you, you talk about that because doing an art market you know you'll get people come in and they're just like oh my gosh wow you know from little kids all the way up to you know older people and but then there's ones that'll come through and they'll just kind of shake their head and, and it's so <laughs> funny because uh, we were doing kind of an inside market so it was kind of open and um uh, a bunch of elderly people were walking through and this one lady she kind of stopped right in front didn't ever come into my area but just stopped right there in front she kind of looked over it looked at it, she looked at me and went no <laughs> and just kept walking and i thought it was the funniest thing ever because it was like okay <laughs> but you know that's the best thing is that you're getting some type of a response i think yes you know, that as an artist, you know, good, bad, indifferent is what you don't want to right. um, really aim towards because then you're not having an effect on people. And this is one thing, too, that I, I tell uh, people that are looking to do it or already in it. My thing is, is I don't paint for anybody else except myself mm -hmm. because it's what I like. And if I don't sell it, it sits on my wall. And I want to enjoy it, you know, so that's kind of, you know, now there's a, a fine line with commissions, but I usually tell them if you'll let me, you know, you see what I've got, you see what I can do, you yeah. know, I can show you and then we can go from there, you I know, mean, so it's, artists, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and sometimes you'll get pieces that are completely out of your style that mm -hmm. they want. And sometimes you just, you know, you do it, you know, because it's 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 money in the bank, you know, right. that will pay the bills that you need to get paid or whatever. But for the most part, I try to I try to really kind of stay away from those because they're not. It's not fun to do when it's not your style, you know. Well, it's, I, it, I when it's right. when it's something that you know is cookie cutter or you know somebody else has done this, and but it's not exactly the way that you would do something or your style. That's when it's not fun. And the whole right. point of all this is. It, not for it to be a job. Nobody likes having a job. Right. Everybody likes doing something that they enjoy and, and you know, want to get up and go do every day. Well, so and that's what I get to do. 
if you just wanted a job, you wouldn't be an artist. It would just be about the money then. Right. So you and I both know there's a lot of easier ways to make money than to decide to be an artist. Very much so. There's a lot of easier ways. I mean, shoot, even just going down and working for eight hours, you know, you know, doing okay. you know anything is easier than being an artist sometimes, you know, or most of the time, because you don't realize when you're an artist, you're, you, you know, it's, uh, anything in, within art, there's a process, you know, yeah. cause okay. You come up with the idea. Well, how do you go about creating that? You know, how do you make it come to life? Whether it be painting, whether it be sculpture, whether it be, you know, graphic design, doesn't matter. There's a process to make that happen. Now, has it ever been done? And then uh, if it hasn't been done, there's no process to go look at or to even get ideas on. So yeah. now you've got to create the process, yes. you know, and then, you know, did that process work or is it working? And then you've got to, you know, change a lot of things. And it's, so it's a lot of uh, problem solving within yourself and with the piece that you're doing. But it's also working out the kink. So for the next time that you do it, you can do it more efficiently and everything as well. So that's probably one of the best things that I really love to do is, is, is having that challenge like the beaded piece, you know, right. it hadn't been done before. I hadn't seen it. And that was kind of one of the things too, is, is I kind of like that. I kind of like doing something that nobody's seen, you know, that nobody's done. Is it, you know, now it's not like way out there where it's so off the wall that, you know, I'm not doing that. I'm trying to do something. It still kind of stays within our boundary, but so, yet expand upon that and, and make it something a little more. And well, that's even I with the, the paintings back here, it's the same thing. So I love the what you're really talking about here that the viewers can listen to because I think a lot of people don't understand all of the layers that it takes to become a successful artist. And mm -hmm. talking about you know, inventor coming up with new ideas and then also your ability to execute. But one of the things I think is really, like to me, just blows my mind with an artist like yourself, is the ability to push through. Because you're creating these things and you're putting this artwork up on the wall. And it's like the greatest level of exposure you're completely exposed at every level of whether people are going to respond, whether they're not. And then you yeah. actually talk for a show and say, oh, I'm going to win with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've got to try to be tough to be able to, to push through all those barriers. And then when someone gets a gorgeous piece of artwork by someone like you, the appreciation that a true collector has, they they get it. They'll see what you're creating and they get that energy exchange. So yeah. um, you know I'm grateful for all this Yeah. And it, it's nice to have those people too, you know, that come in and, and see your stuff and enjoy it. And they want it on their wall because they want to admire it just as much as, as I do when they're sitting on my wall. You know, uh, and that's why I say you have to do it for yourself. Because if you're doing it for somebody else, then it's it's you're not getting the true essence of what it is to be an artist. So and, true. Yeah, uh, because it's got to be a love. It's got to be a passion. You know, those aren't jobs. Those are things that you want to do that you you want to pursue. You know, nobody pursues you know something that they dread doing or that they dread getting up to. They pursue other things that make them happy. You know, things they dream about, things that they want to be. You know, as a kid, you know, we all dreamed of being one thing or another. Now, did we all become that? No, because dreams change and, you know, just in, like it is in life. Some people, that was their pursuit from that point, and they did it. And they still love, and they love doing it. And, you know, but I would say, you know, there's a big percentage that people change. You know, people grow up, people have other things. You know, and I say grow up, I don't want to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still try to be young and hard, you know. <laughs> you know, I don't you want to be in a good time. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, well, but the, the thing is, it's just to have I fun. I just appreciate someone like you. I can see the joy in your eyes, and 
the joy I'm sure that you bring others is equal because I see that passion in your work. So thank you so much for pushing through where people can enjoy it. And I know people are streaming through now, but you know, you're going to be the inspiration to a lot of young people too. So uh, thank you. I hope so. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, Gerald, for being on Order for City, and um, we will be in contact and we'll be opening a gallery on my Indian reservation in San Diego. And awesome. uh, I'll be reaching out to you all in the Jewish store. I'd love to have you before the No, I'd love to. Thank you. All right, Gerald, have a blessed evening, and um, don't watch the news. I'm not going to watch it. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> I don't want to be depressed. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want it to stress me out. That's the whole me thing. Me too. That's it. Better to go paint. Exactly. <laughs> All right, my friend. Have a good evening. Thanks. All right. For thank time. you very much. Okay, take care. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay, another talented Indigenous artist for Native American Heritage Month. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week we will have Frank Buffalo Hyde on. So I'm excited about that. And. Um, we will continue to have Native artists through the month of November, every Wednesday, 4 p.m. live streaming. Um, if you get an opportunity and you miss one of our shows, just go to our YouTube channel, Art of the City TV. Do me a favor, if you wouldn't mind sharing that channel, we're trying to get more exposure for all artists, not just Indigenous artists. We just happen to um, favor those for the month of November. So. Have a great day, folks, rest of the day. Uh, try to relax. I know the elections are still kind of wonky. We're going to find out sooner or later. Um, either way, you're going to always find solace in art. So you can join us here on this live streaming channel or on our YouTube station. Get a little refuge from the storm there. I'm Ruth Ann, your host, and I will see you next Wednesday, Art of the City TV, live streaming here at 4 p.m. Have a good evening, folks.